Hi, Jim Van Zandt here, one of the pastors, Carvalho United Methodist Church, with Sermon in Three Minutes. For the church season of Lent, we've been doing a themed uh, set of sermons on Who is This Man? Borrowing the title from John Ortberg's great book on that. We're discovering who Jesus is, and this past week we discovered who Jesus was as he identified himself. You know, in the New Testament, the most often term used to describe Jesus is Christ, followed by the Lord, and way back in third place is the phrase that Jesus chose to use whenever he talked about himself, and that's the term Son of Man. Obvious question is, why did he choose Son of Man? Well, as you and I hear Son of Man, as New Testament Christians, we hear it as an identification he might have with us and with our plight and to be our servant, and all of which would be partly correct, but not wholly correct. First century Jews would have heard that term Son of Man with a much different feeling. See, Son of Man was a mythical figure that came out of Old Testament prophecy, it comes out of Daniel, as Daniel's peering into heaven into the throne room of God, and he sees the Ancient One on his throne with the fire flowing from the throne, and then there is one like a Son of Man, Daniel writes, who comes out before the Ancient One, to whom the Ancient One then gives all authority on heaven and earth. And the role of the Son of Man was to go down or condescend to earth, roam around, and then report back to the Ancient One what he found, somewhat like a prosecuting attorney. So when those first century Jews heard the term Son of Man, immediately their antenna would have gone up and they knew the prophecies and this was not a welcoming figure because it was a figure of judgment. There are those today who would try and deny that there's any kind of final judgment, and yet it was clearly high in the list of priorities for Jesus if you read what, and listen to what he talks about. We are all going to be held accountable one day for our action and our inaction. There's another wonderful little story in the New Testament where someone other than Jesus uses the term Son of Man, and it happens to be Stephen, the first Christian martyr in the book of Acts. So Luke writes the story as an observer to that stoning. He writes about a moment where Stephen reaches up into heaven and says, Look, I see the Son of Man standing, coming, in a sense, coming toward him. And that's much different than what we know the Son of Man to be, because even in our Apostles' Creed, we talk about uh, ascended in Jesus, ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And here he is standing. And that's where the Protestant reformers clearly got it right. That on that day when you and I are dragged into the throne room, the judgment day, and the books are open and the charges are leveled at us, and Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Ancient One, when it comes to us, if we're one of His, Jesus will get up, come and stand between you and God, and say, Oh God, whatever punishment is due to this person, I will take it, I will pay their price, I will take their punishment, put it all on me, this one belongs to me. He will pass through the throne room into heaven. That's an image that has stuck with me and helps me understand clearly what Jesus does for me. He's my Lord, he's the Christ, he's the Son of Man, he's my Savior, my substitute, and he's the only way through the throne room of God. God bless your day, and if, if you find these three-minute sermons helpful, we'd like to know about it. Please just email us and tell us what you think. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.